Good morning, my most amazing artists. Today we are finishing up our Charlie Harper inspired raccoons. And most of us, I think, are finished drawing them on our large piece of paper. If you're not, that's going to be the first step you do today, is going to be finishing drawing them in pencil first, drawing light, light, light until you get it right. That way we can trace over with Sharpie after and then erase our pencil lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace over all of my pencil lines with Sharpie, moving very slowly, carefully, making sure the cap gets on my Sharpie so I don't lose it. And also that I'm not pressing too hard with these because they are brand spanking new. Brand new Sharpies, they are expensive and if you press too hard on them, then the tip loses its nice point and it'll become flat and press in and then nobody else is going to be able to use them. They'll get yucky really fast. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, once you color in all of those spots that we left while we were drawing because it would take too long to do with pencil, once you color them in with the Sharpie, you're pretty much done. You can cap it. Just make sure you're working on your messy mat while you're working with the Sharpie because if you were working really big like I was and using your whole paper like you should, um, then you might go off the edge a little bit like right here, and that's absolutely okay as long as you're working on a messy mat. <laughs> Alright boys and girls, when you're done with that, we're going to do something called adding texture. Does anyone know what texture is? Hmm. Texture is how something feels. Now it doesn't mean it's emotion, that means how it would feel to touch it. So a raccoon might feel a little bit soft or furry. So to add that texture, you're gonna have a white crayon. What this white crayon will do is create some kind of texture underneath our paint. So I'm just gonna make a few lines to show some fur. Now I know you can't see what I'm doing. I don't even think you can if I change it and show it in the light. So it's kind of like invisible, it'll be magic. But what I'm gonna do is just a few lines you could do back and forth um, I suggest you don't scribble just make some lines um, you could do a pattern if you would like to but this will just give it some texture when we paint so I'm not gonna do that to the whole thing just where there would be fur so that would be maybe around his arms his body maybe the tail maybe a little bit on the belly maybe there'd be a little bit more on the belly if it's gonna be a little bit more white what's gonna happen is when we add the paint these lines will show it'll be like magic. I'll show you in just a second. Alright boys and girls, so today we are painting with watercolor paints. Watercolor paints are activated when you add water to them. So if you were to just take a paintbrush right now and dip it in the watercolor paint, nothing happens. You have to add water to make it work. So you will have, not what I have, I just have a cup of water. You'll actually have a dog bowl full of water in the middle of your table. You do not need too much water to make it work. You just need to dip your paintbrush once and then you're good to go. Now the more water you add, the more translucent or transparent the paint will be. That means that you can see through it. You could see it and it might be a lighter color. That's because something's opaque it'll be really, really thick. That'll be a really bright, thick color that you can't really see through. You can't see behind it. 
So I might want my raccoon in some places to be a little bit more opaque, maybe on some parts of the tail or the body. But for the most part, I'm gonna want a kind of light gray color. Now, we're only gonna be using one color in here, and that's the black, which is on the very end right there. So I'm just gonna do a dip in the black. I'm just gonna test it out, and I'm gonna start on my head up here. I'm gonna start on the head, that way I can uh, work from the top to the bottom and not worry about my sleeves getting in the paint, which I would recommend rolling up, but watercolor is not messy. Also, if you ever need to test out the color or test out if it's going to be opaque and thick black or if it's going to be transparent and nice out on the top of your paper right here, that's a really dark black. I want my raccoon to be gray, so I'm gonna dip it back in the water a little bit. Now that I dipped it back in the water, I'm gonna try it again. Now it's a little bit more transparent, a little bit more gray, so I think I'm good to paint on my raccoon. I'm just gonna start painting at the top. And look at what I can see through. I can see the texture. you're done, you'll rinse off your brush in the water, put it back in the cup in your bin, then you can close up your paints. Now one more thing about watercolor is that when you're painting, you want to do a dip and you want to wipe it on the lip. So whether, what, this is just a regular cup, but when you dip in the water, you want to do a dip and then wipe it on the lip of the cup or the bowl. You want to do that so it's not really, really drippy and you don't need too much water, so dip. If it starts to drip, wipe it on the lip, but not these lips, not on, not the lips on your face. These All right. These also have a little bit of brown in them. I'm gonna go back and add just a little bit of brown on there, just to mix in with the gray to make it look a little bit more realistic. So make sure you don't use too much water because even though this paper is nice and strong and stronger than our sketchbook paper, it still won't hold up if you use a ton of water and keep painting and painting. It'll rip if we use too much, so just make sure you do one layer. You can use gray and brown if you would like, so that would be just a couple times of paint, a couple of layers, but don't do more than that, or the more that you paint and the more water you add, your paper's gonna start to get lumpy, bumpy, and then it might even start to rip. And mine is just starting to get there, where if I were to add any more, it could rip my beautiful masterpiece. So make sure that you realize when you are done, don't add too much paint, and just bring it up to the drying rack. All right, artists, have fun. All right, boys and girls, once you're done, you're gonna put that brush away, make sure your, your table's nice and clean. You guys can close up the watercolor palettes, put them back where you got them, and bring your paintings up to the drying rack. One important thing is that you have your name on them, and make sure that that's either on the front or the back somewhere before you do that. And just in case, because I don't wanna flip it over since it's wet, I'll put my name right up here, just so I know that it's definitely on there. All right, everybody, have fun today.